Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And let's kick things off with the movie news because we got our first, like, actual information on the Silver Phantom VR movie thingy that Bandai has been working on. They gave us a presentation over at South by Southwest 2024, and on Gundam.info, we got like an abbreviated version of that along with the video that they showed there. Now, I will have that video linked down below, but despite the convention being in America, as far as I can tell, the video is actually region locked to Japan, so you'll either have to be physically in Japan or pretend that you're in Japan with a service like NordVPN. And by using my link down below or the code KKRT, you'll not just get a sweet discount, but you'll also be supporting the channel. Update. As I was editing this video, I noticed that the English Gundam.info also uploaded this video. So I guess it was just a timed exclusive. So, um, based on the cockpit from the teaser image, we could already tell that the movie would take place like sometime around Char's counterattack. But now we see ships like the Clop class, mobile suits like the Vanilla Jagan and the Giridoga, and most important of all, we see Axis heading towards Earth. So, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that the movie takes place during Char's counterattack. Like, we follow a new character throughout uh, the conflict, we see a different side of the conflict, but then by the end, this new path lines up with the end of the movie. Uh, so yeah, for the most part, they showed off some really cool stuff. Uh, we see some storyboards with nice little details like a Zaku 2 head flying around, some nice concept art, early work, and a really good looking render of a Jagan. I really like the style on that thing. What I'm less convinced by though is some of the battle animation that they showed off. Now. I hope that it's just because this is like still early in development and that they are going to improve it because right now it feels like it lacks a certain polish. The movements of the mobile suits, like they lack a certain heft to them, a certain impact, which is why their movement feels slightly off and cheap. It, it, like in a video game, you can to a certain extent forgive um, cutscenes like this because you're there for the gameplay, but in a movie, this is the main thing for your experience. Uh, but they did announce that the director is Kenichi Suzuki, who did Gundam Evolve 8, which is the one where the strike Gundam steals the Grand Slam and goes on a melee rampage. So I assume with him directing the thing, they'll polish this stuff up. Also, unlike the announcement video, which was met with some mixed reception, let's say, uh, the new video is being received much better. And on March 22nd, we'll get even more information on the movie. And since we're talking about movies, Gundam Seed Freedom entered its eighth week and it is still in third place on the weekend box office rankings. So it is definitely still going strong. And for the people who go this week in Japan, they'll get one of four random can badges. Then we also got this collaboration art with Dune of all things. Not something I was expecting, but something that is really nice to see nonetheless. And what was also really nice to see was the announcement that the movie will be shown in Belgium on April the 27th and 28th, with tickets being sold on March 21st. Uh, they didn't yet say in which cinemas, but I'm gonna assume that it'll be in Brussels. Oh, and of course, it is subtitled in French. Nom de Dieu de putain de bordel de merde de saloperie de connard d'enculé de ta mère. And another inevitability was the announcement of more merchandise, which will be available through regular retailers. 
with the new Lacus and Kira artwork from the Gundam Seed Grand Prix 2024, you can get a clear file for 440N, 3 US, a sticker for also 440N, 3 US, or an acrylic stand for 1650N, 11 US, all of which is slated for a late April release. Next up then, the Metaverse is back. From March the 9th until the 12th, you could sign up for the next round of beta testing, which will take place from the 15th to the 17th and from the 22nd to the 24th. And I was so excited about this announcement that I couldn't be bothered doing it right away and then forgot about it until like four hours after the signups closed. I I think my brain was trying to do me a favor because seriously, other than being able to make a video on it, this whole thing just felt like a giant waste of time while my computer was tr working overtime trying to run this unoptimized thing that they created. But don't worry, for the people who don't have a computer powerful enough to run the metaverse, you can now get the full Metaverse experience by streaming it through your browser. Now, I could make a joke here about their servers, but considering the population density of their previous test, I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. But on the bright side, they do also have some new stuff to discover, like a Gumpla Battle demo, and existing areas seem to have been completely redesigned, like the Cardass area and the Builder's Museum. It does look much more bland now, but I guess they were going for like a clean space station spaceship feel, so... At the same time, I guess it is also kind of fitting. Um, but yeah, that's really all I've got to say about the metaverse. So from digital Gumpla, we go to the physical Gumpla. This week, the high-grade gun note from Witch from Mercury was announced, but unfortunately, it was also announced that it's going to be a premium Bandai Limited. Um, I'm guess. That guy went way too fast. Um, so I'm guessing that um, whatever Witch from Mercury Gumpla we're still going to be getting is going to be limited. Um, but at least our gun note here is looking like a very solid set. For 2420N, 16 US, we're getting the main machine, the beam rev rifle, um, a pair of short and a pair of long beam saber blade effect parts, stickers to have the shell unit either red or blue, a cheap action base, and effect parts to replicate the data storm. It's just a shame that this really is a feature that makes you want to buy multiples of it, which is of course hindered by the fact that it's a limited kit. But the real meat and potatoes for this week were the figures. Like, we've got some really impressive ones, and therefore, of course, also very expensive ones. And they all went up for pre-order on Japanese P Bandai on the 8th. So, rip to a lot of wallets on that day. The most expensive one of the bunch was the B-style Lacus Klein bear leg bunny version. This one fourth scale figure goes for 36,300 yen, 245 US, and as the name indicates, the big difference with the previously released version is that she now no longer wears her fishnet stockings. Something that definitely creates a whole new look and feel, which can be yours in October. Or you can use that money for the Chogokin Caliborn because it is exactly the same price, and while it might not be quite as sexy as a Lacus Klein bunny figure, it does come with die-cast parts and LEDs for the head, the chest, and thighs, making this an extremely impressive figure. And on top of the regular accessories, it also comes bundled with an action base for the mobile suit itself and for the gun bits. So this really is the perfect Calabarn set. 
and this thing will be flying your way in August. And staying with which from Mercury, there was the Robot Spirit Schwarzit for 12,100 yen, 82 US. And unlike the very white, high grade version, this thing is actually grey like the Schwarzit should be. That's not the only thing this figure has got going for it. In addition to the transforming guardian thing, it also comes with pieces to display the separate parts flying around. They can be used with just a figure alone, but the real play here is to combine them with the Tamashi stage action base. And this figure will be bum rushing you in September. And we have another Robot Spirits figure that went up for pre-order. The Phantom Gundam V2 slash V2 Kai compatible set. Uh, now the figure itself is almost identical to the previously released regular Phantom Gundam, just with some new side skirts and a different color scheme on the head, but it's the accessories where we get the real differences. It now comes with uh, two shields to either turn it into the V2 or the V2 Kai, the Kujaku, a bunch of beam effect parts and also a new action base, which allows you to put both this figure and another figure on it to like replicate scenes from the manga. The whole set goes for 13,200 yen, which is around 90 US and is slated for an August release. Significantly cheaper then is the sixth lineup of Mobile Suit Mechanical Bust, which is also a remold this time around, because it is the Strike Freedom Gundam Type 2. They didn't yet announce when it'll be releasing in physical Gachapon machines, but on Bandai's online Gachapon website, you can already gotcha this thing for 500 yen a spin, 3 US. And there are three sets to collect. The inner frame, which also has the light up unit, a regular armor set and a mechanical clear armor set, which is molded in a really cool see-through yellow slash gold. Meanwhile on the gaming front then, in Gundam Battle Operation 2 for the PlayStation, the new Gundam mass production type has joined the fray. In the global version of UC Engage, the UR Judo Ashta and UR Double Zeta Gundam have become available as unit assemblies and the mission battle is now on. And in Gundam Extreme vs 2 Overboost, a very surprising machine has joined the lineup. The Hekate from Recon Gista in G. Not something I was expecting to see in a versus game. And in other news, it has been decided that on April 11th, Toyota City will be getting two Gundam manholes. On March 26th, Daisuke Hasegawa will be performing G no Senko and Coloring by G Reko from Recon Gista in G at the Gundam Factory Yokohama at 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. respectively. And we got another installment of Advance of Zeta. This time focusing on the Advanced Galbaldi Beta. The machine that was supposed to be one of the main test machines for the Titans, but its pilot defected to the Ayug. So instead, all the parts intended to be tested out by the Galbaldi were now tested out by the Hazels. And the data from that advanced Galbaldi would now be used for the development of Ayug machines like the Nemo Cannon. As for the things you could get this week then, we started out strong on the 9th with the high grade Destroy Gundam for 14,300 yen, 99 US. The behemoth of a mobile suit that I've been looking forward to ever since I first saw this thing on screen, so of course it went on back order. Also on that day, we got two Gundam based limited kits. For 5,610 yen, 38 US, there was the Master Great Aegis Gundam clear color version, which is exactly what it says. And for 1,100 yen, 7 US, there was the Action Base 7 Gundam Seed Freedom Image clear color, which is a bit more than just a clear color version because it also comes with a variety of marking stickers for the main factions of the movie and 
edge stickers for the stand to make it feel a bit more fancy. It is a limited kit after all. Then from the 11th, we got a new line that became available in Gachapon machines across Japan. The Machiboke figures. Featuring the RX-782 Gundam, Jim, mass production type Zaku 2 and Agai all sitting in the fetal position. And that is because like the idea or the concept of this line is that they're waiting for their time to launch. The sad thing though is that the name of the line translates to waiting in vain. So since they're sitting like that, they've probably been waiting for a long time. But for 400 yen a spin, 3 US, you can take one of these cuties home. Next up on the 13th, Nami Tamaki's 20th anniversary album Singularity was released. It contains both new songs like Reborn from Freedom and remixes of some classics like Believe, Realize and Beyond the Time. And then finally today, these mini soft vinyl horrors went up for grabs at Japanese arcades. They're available in green, pink, yellow, blue and purple. As for this week's reading material then, there was the April issue of CG World, which has a feature on the 3D modeling of the mobile suits of Gundam Seed Freedom, the April issue of Animage, featuring an interview with Fukuda, although it is mainly the cover here that is grabbing my attention, the April issue of Animedia, featuring an interview with Nami Tamaki, Great Mechanics G, featuring an interview with Fukuda about the mechanics and the world of Gundam Seed Freedom, the April issue of New Type, featuring a special on the Mamoru Nagano art exhibition and a Gundam Seed Freedom Club Yonkoma pinup poster. And talking about the Mamoru Nagano art exhibition, the official catalog can be purchased at the venue for 4,400 yen 30 US. Currently, it is being held at the EJ Anime Museum in Saitama. Next up then, there was the big comic superior in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized and the final chapter of SD Gundam World Heroes Kira Hagede Monogatari was released for free online and in English and is linked down below. For this week's apparel news then, we didn't get anything from Strict G, but we did get some stuff from Huff. For 110 US, there's a crew neck sweater with the RX-782 in black and white and static lines running across it. For 100 US, there's a random skate deck, which can be either the RX-782, mass production type Zaku or SARS custom Zaku. For 90 US, there's an RX-782 pendant or destroy Gundam zip sweater which I am assuming is named after the episode called Destroy Gundam and not a like misidentification of the Gundam that's on there. For 85 US, there's a triple triangle pullover hoodie with the Gundam in action on the back. For 80 US, there's a crew neck sweatshirt with an embroidered RX-782 in the middle. For 36 US, there's a variety of t-shirts and a cap. Uh, for 25 US, there's an RX-782 banner. For 18 US, there's socks. And for 4 US, you can get an RX-782 sticker or a Scanline sticker, giving you that old school vibe. And I will, of course, have a link to all of that down below. Next up then, we go to Bankore. On the 7th, pre-orders began for the Gundam Seed Grand Prix 2024 Visual Items Collection which includes a Kira or Lacus connecting acrylic stand for 1,100 yen, 7 US, a Kira or Lacus big acrylic stand for 2,750 yen, 19 US, a Kira or Lacus keychain for 1,100 yen, 7 US, and another keychain featuring the promotional art for 880 yen, 6 US, all of which are slated for an April release. One day later then, you could get some more acrylic stands, this time being a large unicorn logo for 1650 yen, 11 US, or a small unicorn logo for 1320 yen, 9 US. And even more acrylic stands were released on the 11th. 
for 990 yen, 7 US, you could pre-order a keychain featuring Kira, Lacus, Atheron, Kigali, Shin, Lunamaria, Meiren, Izak, Pilot Suit Kira, Pilot Suit Atheron, Pilot Suit Shin, Pilot Suit Mu, Pilot Suit Izak, and Pilot Suit Diarca. Next up on the 12th then, we got the Gundam 00 Lettering Collection which features a variety of items with the stylized names of the four Gundam Meisters. And no, no acrylic things this time around. For 2,860 yen, 19 US, there's a toad bag. For 2,200 yen, 15 US, there's a mug. For 1,100 yen, 7 US, a small coin case on a keychain. And for 1,650 yen, 11 US, a pouch. And one day later, we got the handwritten collection featuring the Medea and the White Base. You can get them on a drawstring baggie for 880 yen around 6 US, a tote bag for 2860 yen around 20 US, a laundry net pouch for 2530 yen also around 20 US, or a regular pouch for 1650 yen a little over 10 US. But finally, I kept the best for last, because we're getting a new collection of Gundam-themed underwear. For 3,850 yen, 26 US, you can get them in green with the mass production type Zaku, blue with the goof, or purple with the dom. So, is that a giant bazooka in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? All of these Bunkwede items are slated for a May release. And for those who are desperate for the underwear or any of the other Bunkode items, um, here's a quick reminder that there is a link down below on how to buy this stuff, but I do have to point something out. A while back, I noticed that the proxy site that I usually use could no longer order things from Premium Bandai. Not because they no longer wanted to, uh, but because they were blocked from it. It gave like a pop-up message saying like, we can't buy anything from this website anymore because they refused to work with us. So it seems like P Bandai is cracking down on proxy buying services in like an attempt to curb out scalping, I guess. So you might have to resort to some of the lesser known proxy buying services or like an individual who can get it for you. Um, but as always, let's quickly wrap things up with the polls. With the original Gundam trilogy and Char's counterattack appearing again in Japanese cinemas, Gundam.info wanted to know what our favorite theme song of those movies was. And it was a very close call between the top three. I Senshi won with 34.7%, Beyond the Time was a very close second with 33.3%, and Encounter was third with 30.1%. Which then leaves us with only 1.9% for Sandcross. I think it's been a while since I've seen an option with so little votes. And also, I gotta be honest here, when I first heard I Senshi in the Federation vs. Zeon PlayStation 2 game, I absolutely hated it. But over time, I did grow to like it. Not as much as Beyond the Time or Encounter, but I do enjoy it now. As for the currently ongoing one then, the G Gundam Blu-ray box is getting a restock in Japan, so Gundam.info wants to know what our favorite G Gundam special move is. Sekiha Tenkyo Ken, Sekiha Tenkyo Godfinger, Erupting Shuffle Alliance Attack, or Sekiha Love Love Tenkyo Ken. Clearly, the Nether Typhoon wasn't on this list to give the other options a chance. But what's really funny is that on Gundam.info, all four options are basically equal, but on Twitter, the Sekiha Love Love Tenkyoken is leading by a large margin. As it should, because how could you not vote for an attack that summons the Burger King? So if you want to cast your vote, I'll have the links down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. 
As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.